What's going on everybody? My name is Zach Hartley and in this video I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about getting started with Quest Trade. We're going to talk about pricing, we're going to talk about account types, and we're going to talk about how to get set up to make your first trade. Let's jump right in. Okay, so when it comes to Quest Trade, just to start us off here, you actually have a couple of different platforms that you can choose from. And what I mean by that is that you can use Quest Trade on your mobile device and you can use their app. You can also use IQ Edge, which is basically the software. And so if you're a day trader or a swing trader and you wanna set up multiple screens and do some technical analysis, this is probably the one that you're gonna want. If you are somebody that is just long-term investing and you wanna be able to access it from your computer instead of your mobile device, the web browser option is probably gonna be the best account for you. And if you're just getting started and you wanna try things out and you're not ready to use real money or you wanna test out a couple strategies, I would highly recommend using a practice account. That is where they are gonna give you fake money that you can trade and invest in the real markets to see how you would do. So those are the different options for how you can sort of access Quest Trade. Once you access it, you do need to open an account and you have a couple different types of accounts to choose from. And so the most popular accounts here are the tax-free savings account and the RRSP. The TFSA is really good because you can put money in and take it out whenever you want, totally penalty and tax-free. And if you basically increase the value of your investments, you don't have to pay any taxes on the increase. The RRSP can be really nice if you're in a high tax bracket because the money that you contribute to your RRSP gets deducted from your income and it reduces your taxable income so you have a lower tax bill at the end of the year. Now, if you are somebody that likes to do some day trading or swing trading, I would recommend going with a margin account. This is the type of account that is number one, gonna give you margin so you can borrow money from Quest Trade. It's also gonna allow you to short certain stocks. And so if you are somebody that likes to go both long and short, and you are doing this pretty actively, you may want to consider a margin account. If you're somebody that is buying a home in the future or buying their first home, you might want to consider the first home savings account. This can be really great. There are some limitations as to how much you can contribute, kind of like the TFSA. But the nice thing about the FHSA here is that you get sort of the best of both worlds with regards to tax benefits from the TFSA and the RRSP all combined in the first home savings account. So when you put money in there and it increases in value, you don't have to pay any tax on that increase in value. And when you put money in, it also reduces your taxable income. So it's kind of like best of both worlds there. And then RESP, so this is if you have a kid and you want to start saving for their uh, education, you want the government to contribute a little bit, but you want to invest that money in the meantime, this can be a great option. Now, if you're a business or if you want a different type of education account or a different type of margin or Forex account, they have all of those different different accounts here and uh, and they've got lots of different options so choose what is best for you for most people it's probably going to be the tax-free savings account and then the first home savings account and then the margin account but it really just depends on your situation now when it comes to the fees at quest trade this can be a complicated topic and there's a lot of different things to consider here but basically if you're a long-term investing or if you are not actively day trading, what you are gonna see is about a $5 minimum per trade plus one cent per share um, if you are over that kind of 500 shares. And so stocks are fairly low cost, which is really nice. They're not free, but they're fairly low cost. ETFs are free to buy and they're one cent to sell with a minimum of $4.95. So kind of like the stock pricing here and then options are almost $10 here. So they are a little bit expensive plus $1 per contract. And so if you're a long-term investing or you're, you're kind of just in it to test it out, these are the fees that you are gonna be paying. Now, if you are somebody that is going to be doing a lot of swing trading or day trading, that is when you might wanna consider the active trader pricing because this is gonna give you a couple of options here. Option one is a fixed pricing, and option two is variable here. And the big cash saver is in the options here. So you can get your options down to $4.95 to start with 75 cents per contract. And so almost cut in half here. You also get cheaper trades and you have two different options here. Um, and you can kind of choose whichever one you think is best, but you do have to buy a data package. And so in the US, it's 89.95 and in Canada, it's 89.95 Canadian. And so this is basically gonna give you level one and two data, which is gonna show you where the different orders are at and what orders are going through the system right now in real time. And so 
If you want access to the lower pricing and you think you're gonna be doing some day trading and you want access to level two data, it's gonna cost you about $90 per month and then you'll get access to the better pricing on the trades as well. Whew. So that's a lot to go over right there. There's uh, a lot going on there. Now, before we jump into the actual dashboard here, there are a couple things I wanna say. Number one, if you're interested in signing up for Quest Trade, if you use my link, you will get about a $50 bonus in free commissions once you make a certain number of trades. So definitely check that out. And we do have a sponsor for this video that I'd like to talk about real quick. The company is called SHL Telemedicine and they trade in the US under ticker symbol SHLT. And they have developed a product that is a mobile hospital grade ECG machine. ECG machines are the ones that you see at the hospital that measure your heartbeat and go up and down on a line. It is designed to measure the functionality of your heart and how well your heart is performing and functioning. And what's really exciting about this is they have developed a completely mobile product that you can take to your house that you can use whenever you want and it works on a subscription basis. And so you pay your subscription, you get the device, you can scan yourself at home and then you can send that to your doctor or to a specialist to get reviewed and get feedback on it 24 seven whenever you want. And the benefit here is that it improves the level of care for the patients and it also significantly reduces the number of visits to the hospital, freeing up the doctors, freeing up the nurses to focus on higher risk patients or patients that need them more desperately. And so this is a total game changer in the industry. And if you wanna read anything about that or do some more due diligence on the company, I will put a link in the description to this video. Now let's jump into Quest Trade. All right, everybody, we are now in Quest Trade IQ Edge. This is basically the software that we are gonna use and we are gonna basically design it ourselves to meet our own trade trading and investing needs. And so at the top here, you can see a bunch of little options. And these are basically the windows that are gonna appear that we can use to customize what our screen looks like. So the first thing I wanna open up is the chart. So here's what it looks like. And as you can see, I can basically take it and I can expand it or contract it. And when we start out, we have volume on the bottom and we have no indications, we have no drawings, we have no indicators, we have nothing on this chart. Now, if we want to add to this chart, the first thing that we are gonna do is go up to studies or drawings here. These are the two different things that you can do. So if we go to drawings, you can use a trend line, you can use a price line, you can use Fibonacci, it's all right here. And you can start to draw out the different levels on your price chart. You can go with a price line, you can go with a trend line, you can go with whatever you need, it's probably gonna be here. Me personally, I like to go to trend indicators and then I like to add in two different moving averages. So for me, I go two different moving averages and when you double click on this, it will pop open with a new screen and you can change it from a 20 period moving average to a 50 period moving average. You can even make it exponential or a weighted moving average. And so you've got lots of different options here and you can start to sort of customize what the actual chart looks like. Now, when it comes to the volume at the bottom here, there is one thing that I like to do, and that is go in edit volume. I go to lines and I go to match tick so that we get a little bit of color on our volume. And so when the price goes up in that period, it will come up as green or red. And so now we've got a chart that's starting to look good. I also like to add, for instance, a MACD or an RSI, something along those lines. Here is the MACD with histogram, and you can really choose whatever indicators or whatever drawings you want to put on here. Now, in the top left here, you're going to have the ticker, so you can choose whichever stock you want to look up. We can look up the uh, sponsor of this video, SHL Telemedicine. We can look up whatever we want, and we can look at it over whatever time period we feel is necessary as well. So you can go six months, you can go one month, you can go five days. You can look up whatever time period you want. Everything is at your control right here. Now the other tiles here that are gonna be super important to you, number one are the account. This is gonna show you what accounts you have open on Quest Trade and how much money is in them as well as what positions you have. So that one is super important here. You also have order entry. This is gonna be the window where you place your orders. And so if we are looking at Apple right now and I wanna go in here, I wanna buy 10 shares of Apple and I wanna do it at 
the market price or I want to put a limit on it, whatever you want. You can choose your order type right here. You can choose the duration, whether it's good for today or whether it's good till closed or whether it's good till an extended period, whatever you want, you can choose all of that right here. You need to select what account you want and then you can place your order to buy or sell that share. Now, something that's really important here is that if you go to this chart and you type in Microsoft, the chart is gonna to change to Microsoft, but the order entry is not gonna to change to Microsoft. And so what you need to do here is you need to go to this little paper clip and you need to choose a color. So let's say that we choose green here, we'll choose green here, so now they match. And if you noticed, this automatically changed from Apple to Microsoft. And now if we change this back to Apple, the chart will change back to Apple as well, which is really, really nice. And so now you've got your chart here so you can do your own analysis. You've got your order entry window here so that you can buy or sell. The next thing that you're gonna want is your watch list. Your watch list is this little tab right here and it's gonna open up a new window. This window is gonna show you all the different securities that are on your watch list. It's usually gonna start with the market view which shows you all of the major indices. So here we've got the S&P 500, we've got the composite, we've got the Dow Jones, but nothing is changing on the chart because we do not have these connected. But once we connect the watch list, now, as I select through these, you can go S&P, you can go NASDAQ, you can go the VIX, you can go to the NASDAQ composite. You can do whatever you want. And again, you can change the time period. And so now you've got a watch list set up. You can go through the different securities. You can look at the chart and you can place the order right here. For me, what I like to do is I like to arrange my watch list based on the industry. So for example, I have an electric vehicle watch list where it has all the different EVs that are available in the marketplace. And I can basically sort through the entire industry right here. I can look at all the charts, and then I can place my order really quickly. And so this is usually the rough template of how I have my kind of web page set up. Now, a lot of traders and a lot of people like to have multiple screens when they're trading. You've seen, I'm sure you've seen the traders that have four giant screens of different charts all going while they're trading. And the way that you do that in this software is you click this button right here where it says float. It's basically gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn this into a green border here. And now you're actually gonna be able to, you're not gonna see it in this video, I guess, but you're gonna be able to drag this off the screen and you're gonna be able to move it onto whatever screen you want. And so if you ever wanna set up multiple monitors, all you need to do is open the window and then click on this button, choose float, and you can move it to whatever monitor you want. If you wanna set up multiple charts and you've already got all your settings on here, what I would do is I would right click on the top here and then I would click on duplicate window. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop open a brand new window here. You can set it to a new color and that is going to have it ready to go and you can change your watch list color so that it now controls that chart. You can do whatever you need to set up your screens the way that you want them. That's the idea with this software is they basically give you all these different tiles and you set it up the way that you want and the way that's gonna work best for you. Okay, so now we got all our screens set up. We got our chart, our watch list, our order form. One thing that you might be interested in if you're day trading or short-term trading is level two. We talked about that advanced data package to get the better pricing. Well, here's how you pull that up. This level two button right here is gonna give you a new window. And as you can see, it showed up behind my chart here. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna exit my old order window. I'm gonna exit the watch list and I'm gonna bring this one over here. And now, as you can see, it has shown me the bids, the asks, and the current transactions. We'll move this over just a little bit so we can see. But as you can see, here is Apple. Here are all of the bids, all of the asks, and here are all of the transactions that are going through right now. We're actually in after hours markets um, or post market right now. And so this is level two. You can see the bid, the ask, and all of the orders that are going through right now. And the idea here is that if you see a bunch of sell orders at a certain level, you can kind of get the idea that the price might get rejected at that area. Or if you see somebody that's just consistently stepping in and buying at a certain area, you can use that to your advantage as well. So that's the idea with level two and time and sales is basically what it's called on the right hand side here. Level two is where you can see the data about the buy and the sell. 
the venue is basically where that order is coming from the bid is the price and then the size is the quantity and usually this is a multiple of 100. now the last thing that i want to share with you here is finding options i know a lot of people are interested in options these days and so to get to options there's a couple different ways you can do it actually the way that i do it though is through the stock chart and so Pull up the chart of the stock that you are interested in and then where it says STK next to the ticker up here, you select it, you click on options and then you can choose your expiration, you can choose your strike price, you can choose whether you want to call or a put and you can choose the timeline of the chart that you want to look at. And so this one right here is Apple November 17th options with a strike price of 160 and we are buying the calls. That's basically what this would do. And then you buy it and sell it the same way you would a stock. You can put this on your watch list. You can do whatever you want. And so the idea behind Quest Trade IQ Edge is that you set it up in whatever way is going to work best for you. The web browser is pretty straightforward. It's the same principles but it's a really much more simple system without the technical analysis. The order system is pretty much identical though. And on the web browser, it's kind of like, well, simple. It's basically, you gotta be stupid to mess it up. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward and fairly limited. And so I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end. I sincerely appreciate it. And if you're interested in a course on or learning about how to trade options and how these different things work, I've got links down below that will give you free access for one month to all of my courses on Skillshare, including day trading, including options, including dividend investing, and stock market fundamentals that has almost 20,000 students now. So very exciting. Check out all the links down below. Again, you'll need that link to get the $50 to sign up for Quest Trade. Everything should be there. I hope this video helped. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.